Hello, my name is Jonathan Broadwell, creator of the Serial Wombat Open Source Project and an Embedded Systems and Medical Device Development Consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. If you need help with an Embedded Systems Project or a Medical Device Project, give me a call. Uh, today we're going to be looking at implementing a Bang Bang controller, a hysteresis controller, on the uh, Serial Wombat 18AB chip using its internal real-time control capabilities. So let's talk about the main idea of this video. The Serial Wombat 18AB chips, a real-time control coprocessor that can be configured to control a system over I squared C or UART from a PC, a Raspberry Pi, or a uh, Arduino or similar device. The Serial Wombat 18AB firmware contains support for transforms and control algorithms to achieve these things. There are other control algorithms besides uh, hysteresis, such as PID. We're, we're going to show how the control system can be experimented with in a GUI, and then you can generate code for Arduino from that GUI in order to entirely set up and implement the control system. Let's talk about the requirements that we're going to set for this, this particular example. Basically, two of them, they're pretty simple. We're going to maintain the temperature of a physical plant between 43 and 44 degrees C, and we're going to display that temperature on a display. So let's take a look at how we can do that with the Serial Wombat chip as commanded from an Arduino, but without being controlled by the Arduino. Let's get started and take a look at the control system circuit that we're going to be interested in today. It's a pretty simple control system. Uh, what we've got over here is a FET, which is going to be controlling 5 volts going through a 20 ohm resistor. Uh, that'll generate about 250 milliamps, and so that will be enough to modestly warm this resistor. Taped to the resistor with the school uh, scotch tape is a temperature sensor that generates 10 millivolts per degree Celsius. Uh, so we'll be able to measure that. It provides a feedback analog voltage that we'll be measuring with pin number 19 on the Serial Wombat chip. The FET will be controlled by pin number 18. We want to be able to see what the temperature of our system is, and so we're going to be using this TM1637 display, uh, which is hooked up to pins 5 and 6 on the Serial Wombat chip. The Serial Wombat chip firmware itself is generating these numbers. Uh, it doesn't rely on the PC or the Arduino to do that display. It's all internal. Let's talk for a minute about the temperature sensor. We're going to use a TMP366Z temperature sensor uh, that outputs a proportional voltage to the temperature, 10 millivolts per degree centigrade with a 800 millivolt offset. The Serial Wombat ADC is 12 bits and we do what's called left justification. So it looks like a 16 bit number. And when you do that, uh, it represents a proportion of the range from zero to whatever your, volt, your supply voltage is. So at 3.3 volts, each bit of the Serial Wombat ADC is worth 0.05 millivol uh, millivolts or 50 microvolts. And so if we run this sensor through the Serial Wombat's 12-bit that looks like 16-bit A to D, then we get 120, 198 counts per degree C. So that'll be important. The Serial Wombat firmware works entirely in integers. There's no floats anywhere in the system. That's one of the ways that I can manage to service 18 pins a uh, thousand times per second is by limiting the amount of CPU time that any pin uses. So that means we have to be uh, smart in the way that we use our numbers, and in this case, integers. So instead of expressing temperatures as 35.5, we're going to multiply that by 100 and express them in hundredths. So 35 degrees C will show up as 3500. In order to calculate the temperature in one hundredths, we use the ADC counts divided by 198 that we got before, and then we'll subtract off the 800 millivolts times 0.05 uh, millivolts per count for this offset, then we'll take the whole thing and multiply it by 100. And the Serial Wombat firmware does this in a smart way where it multiplies first, then divides, so that it can do all of this with integer math without actually having to, uh, to know this. So ultimately, temperatures in 100ths, for, in the human readable, it's 0 .05 of, 0 0.505 times the ADC value minus 4028.
Inside the Serial Wombat chip, there is the processed input module, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute, that'll do this MX plus B slope conversion for us. And it'll provide the rest of the system a temperature in hundredths degree C. Uh, when we initialize the code in the Arduino, you'll see that the 0 0.505 becomes 129 because uh, the slope is actually expressed as 256. Uh, when you do an integer math, you tend to deal with fractions that have a denominator in a power of two. And so 0 0.505 times 256 is 129. That'll be the slope that we use. Uh, the wand bat panel is convenient because it automatically does this conversion for you. You don't have to think about it when it generates the code. The Serial Wombat 18AB chip is in a sense, a signal processing device. And you can see that we've got the various signals that we're going to be using here all hooked up. On pin number 19, we have the analog input from the temperature sensor. On pin number 18, we have an output that goes to the gate of a FET. That FET, in turn, will control whether or not current can flow through the uh, resistor, which in turn will heat it. Uh, in this case, we're going to be doing uh, hysteresis, or what's called bang-bang control, where we turn the value, where we turn the power on when we drop below a certain temperature and turn it off again when we get above that temperature. It's a very simple sort of control, but can be effective enough for these kind of things. It's exceptionally easy, easily understood, and it's one of the only options you have if you have a system that turns purely on and off. Now, we, we know that we could PWM this system if we wanted to, but we won't. We will, in fact, we will, however, be configuring pin number 18 in PWM mode, even though we're only going to use it at zero and 100%, because PWM mode is how we get the output scaling functions that include the onboard feedback control. You'll also see down here at the bottom, we have a TM1637 display that's hooked up to pins five and six. Those are excellent choices for these pins because they don't really need any of the Serial Wombat chip special capability. You notice that pin five and six is not green, so it's not analog capable. It's lacking the little dot, which means that it doesn't have enhanced digital output capabilities, nor is it marked yellow, so it's not one of the special five volt tolerant uh, pins. So. These, are, these two pins work well together. I'd highly recommend using those anytime you use a TM1637. Let's zoom in a little bit now and look at what's coming off of pin 19. Pin number 19 is doing an analog to digital conversion that will generate a number between 0 and 65535. We're going to send that through the input processing unit that's part of any every proportional input pin mode on the Serial Wombat chip. And they all have this same block diagram. We're gonna send the analog measurement through and we will enable the processing so it'll follow this path. If it was disabled, we would just feed the analog measurement directly out here to the public data provided by that pin for the rest of the system. So we'll go through here. Outlier exclusion is good if you're trying to get rid of the occasional noise, uh, perhaps because of a loose connection or something like that. We don't need that here, so we're not gonna do that. Invert is appropriate when you want a number to go up when your output goes down. Uh, we also don't need that, so this will be purely a pass-through. The transform, we care about a whole bunch. That is our uh, MX plus B that we talked about before. It'll be 0.505X minus 4028. So what comes in here will be analog to digital converter counts. What comes out this side of that block will be degree C in hundredths of a degree. And then this is a very slow moving system. And so it benefits from averaging. Inside of every processed input block is a configurable average or filter that you can apply that uh, in, in this case, we're just going to average 256 samples and output it. So it'll come out of the input processing unit and become a 16-bit number that ranges from 0 to 65,535. Now, we know in reality, ours will range probably at room temperature somewhere between 2,000 and maybe 3,200 if it's really hot in here, and then we'll boost that temperature up. Our goal is going to be to drive this thing to uh, 4,300. And so once that public data is out available within the Serial Wombat chip, other pins can act on it. So we're going to look at pin 18. That's the one that goes out to our FET. 
and it will take in the value from pin 19 and pass it through the scaled output blocks before it goes out of the chip as a physical signal. So it's going to come in here. Again, this has an enable. We could just skip that, but we're not. We're going to pass it through these blocks. Scale inputs uh, is for another video. We're not going to do that. We're also not going to invert. And so the temperature in hundredths is going to go directly through here. And until we get to the control and feedback loop, which is the part that we really, really care about. And we're going to set this up for a very simple hysteresis controller. We're going to say, hey, if you drop below 4,300 counts, which would be 43 degrees C, I want you to set the PWM output to 65,535. That's 100%. And if you get above 4,400, 44 degrees, I want you to set it to 0%, so it'll turn back off. And that signal will get fed through here. There's no reason for us to do output filtering or averaging, and we don't need to do any kind of an output scaling on here. There are other videos, uh, if you look at the ones on the robot arm, that talk a lot about the output filtering and the output scaling. Those are great for things like servos. So that'll pass out here and go up to the driver for pin 18 that will output the PWM, which in this case is either going to be 0 or 100% on. If we go back and look again at the public data coming out of pin 19, which is our temperature in hundredths degree C, it's also going to get sent to the pins that we set up as a TM1637 driver. Uh, we'll use pins 5 and 6, and it will display that output uh, of the temperature on the display. So let's take a look now at the Serial Wombat panel and implement this thing. Okay, let's configure this thing up in the Serial Wombat uh, panel app. So we're going to go to Port, Open Serial, and COM25 is the port that my Serial Wombat chip is on. Note that on the chip I have the jumper installed to uh, put it in UART mode. Okay, I found the chip. Let's start with the TM1637 display. And so we'll click on pin 5, which is the clock pin of the TM1637. If you haven't used this pin mode before, look up above in the YouTube video right now, and you'll see a link to an entire tutorial video on using a TM1637. You'll want to do that if you have a four-digit uh, four display or display that's different than the one I have. So we're going to do this. We're going to hit our Configure button. And we see right off the bat, we get the initialization string that tells us the order of the characters. Again, look at the other video to understand what all that means. And so now we'll write digit order. Hey, that looks good. Now our digits are all in the right place. So now let's set our data source pin. What did we want our data source to be? Well, remember we said it was going to be the public data coming out of pin 19, which is the temperature sensor. So we're going to set this up to display decimal. And OK, that looks good. It's showing all zeros. I don't want leading zeros. Let's get rid of this suppress leading zeros and hit the right digit order again. And so now, OK, now we've only got one zero. And we know eventually we're going to have four digits that have uh, two after the decimal point. So let's enable that decimal point. Doesn't make sense now, but it will in just a second. So I think I like that for the TM1637. Now let's get down to brass tacks with the analog input. So we're going to go to analog input, say configure. We're going to come over here to transform and pick MX plus B. We're going to do 0 0.505 as we talked about. And also uh, minus 4028. We'll say configure MX plus B. We'll go to averaging and say 256 and say set and we'll come down here and we will say average as the value we want to output as our public data and say enabled and now we see okay we've got a really good solid uh thing going on there on pin number one it looks like actually i've got my my uh output turned on at the moment we'll turn that off but uh and now we're going to go to the pwm and set that guy up so we're going to go in here and we'll say configure and then this one will be a pretty straight one forward one we're going to go to feedback control uh hysteresis our low limit is 4300 at 43 degrees we want to turn it on 
full on on this chip is 65,535. That's 100% duty cycle. When we get up to 4,400, we want to turn it off, which is zero, which is fine. And we will say, and we want it to pay attention to pin number 19, which is the one that is the temperature output. So we will say enable on that one. And we're getting some kind of wonky values on the uh, analog. Let's take a look at that real quick. We can come over here. We can still look at the values through the Serial Wombat chip. Things are really moving around a lot. We're getting a strange fluctuation there. Let's see, what do we got going on on uh, pin 18? We can look at its output by saying monitor public data there. Okay, and the value it's putting out doesn't make any sense. It should be either 0 or 65,535. So if I go back to the PWM pin, so you can figure hysteresis. Okay, something I punched in. I punched in some button that was wrong. So now it's sticking 65,000, which is good. And it should sit there until we uh, get up to 44,000. I've actually got my camera in high res mode right now. I'm going to shut that off and put it in 1080p so that it'll, uh, it will uh, take up a lot less space on my hard drive. So you'll see a little glitch here, but uh, that won't be uh, serious. And we can see that value is going up and up and up. I'm going to turn off the auto sample over here and we'll stop monitoring things on the PC side. I don't want to give the impression that the PC is doing any of the work. It's not uh, all of the real-time control is happening on the Serial Wombat side. So we can see it, it's up to 39 now and going up. We're putting about a watt and a quarter into that resistor, which is, it's a big chunk of uh, ceramic over there, but it's going up at a reasonable pace. Okay, we're getting up to 43.8, 43.9, 44. It'll probably rise a little bit more because there's heat from the middle that'll be making it out to the edge. And 41.23, 44.32, 34, 38, 39, 37, 41. Looks like maybe it's peaked. And are we going to go back to 44.3? Yeah, we are. So we can see the temperature now is starting to go back down. There's a little bit of lag as the hot part of the resistor in the center of that block, the heat has to emanate out. So, but now we see the guy dropping back down. I'm going to speed up this video again and we'll let it what, drop down to 43 and then we'll see it go back up. Okay, it just dropped below 43. That should trigger the heat to come back on. Again, a little bit of lag. We see it is going back up at this point. So now it'll oscillate back and forth uh, between 43 and 44 degrees. So we've shown that we can uh, set up a control system on the Serial Wombat chip. Now let's show how we can use automatic code generation to uh, do the same thing on an Arduino. Okay, so for the automatic code generation, we're going to need a framework to put it in first. I've created an Arduino sketch. I've included Serial Wombat.h and created a Serial Wombat chip. Uh, I've started up wire and I've called begin on the Serial Wombat chip. So now let's just go ahead and make things happen. We'll do it in the same order we created the stuff before. The way these gen code buttons work is they look at the settings and they generate appropriate code. And for the most part, the button right after the configure will clear the clipboard and add code. Then at that point, just go through and hit the gen code buttons next to the other buttons that you used. So 
now we've got some code that we generated for the TM1637 on the Windows clipboard. So I'm going to hit paste in here. Note that the, some of the code needs to go up here, some needs to go down there. The declarations, it will look like this, and they'll say, put this line above setup. So do that, and it'll say, some of them will say to do, to do. That'll generate an error at compilation if you leave it in there. So that's a reminder that you got to move this code up here. You can't just paste it all into setup. So what do we got here? We initialized the TM 1637 on pin five, data pin six with six digits, a uh, character array. Then we write to the array, then we, all right, now let's configure the A to D converter with gen code on the config, gen code on the transform, gen code on the averaging, and gen code on the overall enable. Come over here, hit enter, and again, we've got one of the lines that declares the analog input that needs to get moved up to the top. And then let's do the same thing for the PWM output. Uh, gen code here, gen code on the feedback control, and gen code on the enable. And hit that. Now let's go up to tools, auto format, because the spacing is always wonky on that particular thing. And let's compile it. Okay, that built good. Uh, doesn't have a COM port 3. Let's fix that. We'll come over here to our hardware setup. We've got an ESP8266 over here that we are going to connect up to the SCL and SDA pins on the Serial Wombat chip. And I am going to disconnect this guy that will kill the power. I'm going to pull off the jumper that does a uh, UART versus I squared C. I'm going to reapply the power over here and we're going to need a common ground as well. Let's velcro it down there. Let's move that over just a little bit. Make life easy on us. We're not going to share power uh, from the Arduino because we're getting power from this USB adapter. And we will plug in our green wire here. Do we have to still have audio? Let's go to tools, port, got com three, sketch, upload. Okay, so we can see we are in the loop now. Uh, we're up just over 44 and the temperature is going to start coming back down. I'll speed up the video and let it run through a couple of cycles so that you can see it really is under control under the Arduino chip. Okay, it's dipping below 43 now and we can, we'll be able to see it uh, start heading back up here in a second. Okay, there we see the temperature has bit started rising again. We are definitely under control. And if we look in the Arduino uh, sketch, we can see that the loop here is totally empty. All we're using the Arduino for is to send these initialization commands. Now, if all we wanted was to have this controller, we don't even need the Arduino to send the, in the installation commands. Let's disconnect the Arduino and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna restore the uh, UART jumper so that we can talk to it using the Wombat panel application again. And all this jumper does is ground the address pin. Grounded address pin needs UART, not I squared C. Plug this guy back in. 
And we could see nothing happened because the Arduino wasn't there to give us any commands. Let's go back into the Wombat Panel application. Okay, so let's do this in the same order that we did before. Except we are going to go to the Serial Wombat Panel and say, Start Command Capture. And then we will go to the Display and just go through and hit all of our configure buttons again. And at this point, it will be storing those configurations into the chip. Analog input, configure, configure the transform, configure the averaging, and hit enabled. And then let's go to the PWM and say configure, configure hysteresis on pin 19 and enable. And then let's go to command capture and say stop and store. And we'll give that a minute and it should store all of those parameters into the flash to be replayed when the Serial Wombat chip starts back up. So let's come over here and you'll see that I disconnected my Arduino. I'm going to pull power from the computer. So now we are completely plugs out of the computer. And we'll use this USB battery to power the system. And I got to watch I don't knock any of my wires loose here. And at this point, at 43, we were in between, so power could be probably off, maybe on, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like the power is on. It's on its way up. And when it hits 44, we'll see if it drops back down. And we see our temperature dropping again. We'll let it go down to 43 and come back up just to prove that it's working. And my USB battery shuts off if the uh, if the heater's not on because there's not enough drain to keep it going. Okay, but now we're down below 43. There should be plenty of drain to keep it running now. Are we going to see it warm back up? Kissing 68. If we see that thing go up to 42.8, we'll know that we're definitely warming. Yep, so the heater is back on. And uh, we are on our way back up to 44. So we'll keep oscillating forever between 43 and 44 as long as I keep turning this USB battery back on. So pretty fun stuff. So what we saw today was we can configure the thing. Uh, in the Wombat panel, we can export those parameters so that we can load it in Arduino and have the Arduino do the configuration. Uh, at that point, we could also do other real-time controls. Certainly, if we were on a ESP8266 or ESP32, we could, you know, uh, send that data out for analysis or, or remote monitoring or whatever. Uh, and if all we need is a standalone feedback controller, we saw how you can, just using the GUI, configure the Serial Wombat chip so that it standalone uh, becomes a feedback controller. So if you have any comments, any features you'd like to see, if you've got an idea for a system you'd like to control like this, uh, please leave me some comments, like the video, uh, get on Instagram and watch uh, at Serial Wombat. There's uh, some additional content on there, short stuff that I don't make whole YouTube videos for. Uh, pretty excited about all of this and uh, look forward to it. This code uh, will be checked in. Today's the 16th. Uh, I'll have the latest version of the Wombat panel with all this functionality up by the end of this weekend, which will be 2.18. Uh, the video should be going up about that time. So anyway, until we speak again, uh, have fun and keep making stuff. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. 
The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.